Greetings, multicellular organisms. It's the bird of the shore, better known as shorebird. And thank you for joining me here today. Now, if you are not new to animal documentaries and just love to binge watch them like I do, you're probably not new to the series called Monster Bug Wars, which is basically that battle for arachnophobics. And the fights are not hypothetical. They actually happen in the most gruesome display of documentaries possible with the silliest sound effects, which basically made the series very popular. Now, I know they released an episode containing their top 10 bug battles, which to me was kind of a letdown. I know, I know most of those battles that were included there are able to be considered as deserving to be in the list. But to me, it just felt like a tribute to the footages they can obtain from their past episodes. I mean, that battle was 80% comprised of season 1 battles, one of which was from the pilot episode, and one was from the season 2 episode. A season which, to me, may contain so much candidates for the top 10 bug battles, but only one made it, and that one wasn't even that great of a fight. And seriously, the Trapdoor Spider versus the Desert Centipede, that wasn't a fight, that was a hunt. So, I am here today to create my own list of top 10 Bug battles. Ironically, we have the original first blazer in the tenth place. Happens when a deadly tree scorpion invades a green ant kingdom. It's a call to arms to defend the empire. Now, the reason I placed this at the lowest spot was because I don't really find the one bug versus an entire colony to be a fair fight. Basically, the tree scorpion versus the green tree ants is the fairest in its respective format. You can really see the progression of the scorpion from just minding its own business to being an actual threat in the ant colony. It actually stood a chance with the amazing musical score that came with it. And you can see that there are actually lots of damages that the scorpion posts in the colony in comparison to the other battles which to me was just very unfair because that one bug could not even harm a single ant. But in this one, the scorpion was actually lashing out at the colony and actually dealing some damages at the ant colony. The fight is still unfair so it's still ranking it in this lowest place. In the ninth place, we have two very alike predators. When a green praying mantis encounters a ferocious predatory Katie did, the judge's verdict is final. Now, they are very alike in so many aspects. First is their hunting strategy. Both are using camouflage and spiked limbs to grab their prey. They both have mandibles, and those mandibles often hold them to a disadvantage against animals that are equipped with venom or webs because the, the mandibles aren't as threatening as you would describe it. They could only kill once they manage to subdue their prey, and it's actually hard to predict a winner in this battle because they are very much alike. Even the colors are similar, even the length is similar. And the battle was exciting to watch because I was really on the edge of my seat while I was watching that. The Mantis and the Orthopterans don't really win battles unless they are fighting someone with, who's basically not able to win against them. Like the Spiny Leaf Insect or the Owl Butterfly Caterpillar. So now they managed to duke it out and the result was basically satisfying. Although the battle was pretty quick and there are more deserving battles in the list that would go higher. In the 8th place, here we are introduced to a very interesting bug. When a vinegaroon and a strike-tailed centipede come to the surface, all hell will break loose. A vinegaroon was actually powerful because it did not need venom to actually win the fight and it did not lose against one of the most unfair features an animal could have which is the venom and it is one of the few battles where a powerful predator lost the way they introduced the centipede and the way that they described it and the way that they showed the centipede especially with the previous battles is that the centipede could actually win this fight 
had it managed to land a good blow against the Vinegaroon. The Vinegaroon introduced us to a new efficient way of dealing, which beat the most common, which is the Venom. There is great narration in this fight. It was spine tingling. If you are afraid of bugs, you will really hate this battle. Although the fight is too quick and there aren't any new faces, it's just the Vinegaroon holding onto the centipede until the centipede actually dies. Now, you would notice in this list that I, I only put a certain battle in a certain format when it does something unexpected. In this case, in the seventh battle, I placed the battle in its respective format that showcased one of the biggest plot twists in Monster Bug Wars history. And this is... What happens when a bulldog raspy cricket and a whistling tarantula come to blows? There are no holds barred. In this battle, I'm usually not a fan of the spider versus orthopteran battles. It's not a battle. Come on, guys. It's not a battle. On this one, the Bulldog Raspy Cricket actually stood a chance against the Tarantula. And ironically, I would expect the kick attack to be coming from the Cricket, which ended up coming from the Tarantula this time. It was a blow-for-blow -blow battle. And the common chief, with which is the Venom, in the entirety of Monster Bug Wars, did not win this time. It was gruesome. It has two faces. One of the faces was where the Tarantula rushes to the Cricket, and another where the Cricket rushes to the Tarantula. Although, I did not like the part where the Tarantula had to be smaller in order for a change to be made in this certain format, wherein the Cricket would be winning. And had they shown the coup de gras, where the cricket actually captures the tarantula and lands the first bite instead of showing the cricket pulling the tarantula out of its burrow and skipping to the part where the cricket was eating already, this battle would have ranked higher. In the sixth place, you may notice how I admired storytelling as a feature in the battles of Monster Bug Wars and another criteria for it to be ranked high. And this battle took storytelling as its ace to be part of this list. And this battle is... When a baby black-tailed scorpion takes on a pirate spider, it's youth versus experience. I admire how they made the story of the baby black-tailed scorpion to be emotional. It felt like I was watching a film starting from the part where it was detached from its mother and had to survive the big world of bugs. And it was the fairest in its respective format. Normally, I don't appreciate battles between the spider and the scorpion because it's just the usual format where the scorpion would be stinging the spider and the spider would be incapacitated. But this time, I actually rooted for the scorpion. It was fair, especially in terms of size and the maturity of the spider. It actually stood a chance against the scorpion so i really saw myself rooting for the scorpion to win this fight just considering its heart heartwarming story although the fight is still common in its respective format and it wouldn't really make this high without the amazing background story we are on to the top five battles and these battles to me rank up the place when it comes to intensity and blow for blow battles on the fifth place, we have the original ninth placer. When a tiger beetle confronts a raspy cricket, the end will be violent. This battle is gruesome. It has many faces and it is fast paced. It was blow for blow. Both animals are actually scoring an attack against each other. The tiger beetle bit the cricket, the cricket bit the tiger beetle. These bugs have features. To, to be able to win this fight, which was actually used in the fight, and the fight was very intense. No venom, no web, no colonies, and no long-range attack was used in this battle. Kudos to that pilot episode. The top 4 battle is the reason why the centipede versus the vinegaroon actually made it in this list. The desert scorpion and the desert centipede are a menace to many creatures, especially each other. When the fifth battle 
showed a blow for blow fight with no venom involved. This one had Venom versus Venom, two of the most common cheats used by two of the dark horses in Monster Bug Wars. It's interesting to see these two actually duke it out considering how formidable they are in the respective battles. It was another blow for blow battle, it was fast paced, it had many faces. It was actually almost a wrestling match to watch with the claws of the scorpion and the legs of the centipede. It was gruesome and it was a fair fight. So to me, this battle ranks fourth in my list. When these two night fighters step into the cage, there's no prize money. But you do get to eat your opponent. Normally, I am not a fan of battles that makes use of venom and web in the fight because to me it was a cheat for one insect or one arthropod. But this time, it had the venom versus venom and web versus web format. And it ranked high for its great storytelling. The Rufus comb footed spider takes on a spitting spider. It's the mother of all battles. It is the second ferret in its format, with the use of the web and an animal going into the web. The spitting spider. It was an interesting animal. It's about a half inch from her prey. She'll then vibrate her fangs at 1,800 times a second while spraying out this venom-laden silk concoction, coating the prey in a zigzag pattern and pinning it to the It introduced us to another interesting animal, although the use of web is pretty much common across the spiders. A silk spitter and a silk spinner duking it out and the one with the common features actually winning and defending her babies that to me was good storytelling. A rufous comb-footed spider settles into her new home. Her one thought is to protect her eggs. But a fully armed spitting spider is about to invade her nursery. Blow for blow battle. The spitting spider finds back. A fair fight used in the water. No matter how formidable your weapon, if you run out of ammunition, you're finished. The top two battle created an interesting take on the use of webs in the history of Monster Bug Wars. It's web versus the brute force of another introduced interesting animal. When a geophilic centipede grapples with a Costa Rican cellar spider, it's silky skills versus straight-out savagery. I did not expect a format of a bug being stuck in a spider web to actually make it high in this list, but the centipede stood its ground. It did not disappoint with the introduction it obtained with it being strong and actually standing a chance against the spider. That fight didn't occur in a format that the spider only wrapped the prey. And even though the narrator stated and the expert stated that the prey could still pose a massive threat by biting the spider or kicking the spider that did not actually happen, the centipede actually posed a massive threat by constantly breaking free. So the winner is debatable until you actually finish the fight. Now this battle introduced us to another interesting bug, which is the Geophilid Centipede. And considering the history of centipede, in the entirety of Monster Bug Wars with more legs that could have been another goat in the series. But this time, it was pitted with a very common animal, which is the Delicate Cellar Spider. Now, Monster Bug Wars is basically popular for hosting curb stomp battles. But this time, in the top two, we have probably one of the most curb stomp matchups that actually surprised us in the end. Because when you create a curb stomp battle, it has to actually surprise the viewers and not give them something that they already expect. Especially when the Predator is even more upgraded this time. That is not a battle. That is the Predator showcasing their skills. So seeing that kind of battle that was showcased in the fight of the Geophile and Centipede and the Costa Rican Cellar Spider, the Spider, despite the weak Venom, actually stood his ground. With not one of the most impressive weapons in Monster Bug Wars history, but it actually managed to fight this new bug that was introduced to us and gave us one of the tensest battles. It's been an epic battle. Now, 
the epic feast. The top one bog battle is not the fairest in its format because that format is normally fair. It was colony versus colony. When an army of green ants marches against a swarm of paper wasps, it's a battle worthy of the big screen. Now this one actually showed the actual monster bog war. It was blow for blow. It had that colony versus colony battle where each animal had special features battling each other. The paper wasps had flight and the stinger in their arsenal. And the ants had their cooperation, the formic acid and the mandibles. And seeing how individual the paper wasps are in terms of fighting and the ants are actually working together to beat a single paper wasp, it was a fresh take on the series. And I actually love to see the, an the ants' cooperation in this one considering there are many paper wasps in this battle. And the winner was debatable because you can actually see in the end that they are still fighting. To me, I could also count the ants as a winner for that battle due to how much of the colony of the paper wasps they have damaged. They were able to use cooperation to their advantage even when fighting a massive colony and not just one bug. This fight had the epic storytelling which I'm also looking for, the good musical score. The green ants may have the upper hand, but now the wasps retaliate. <laughs> Mounting a concerted airborne attack. It even felt dangerous to film considering the camera workers would, could potentially be stung by the wasps. The ants stood their ground against the introduction of another interesting bug. To me, it was epic. It was gruesome. It was a war. The green tree ant colony versus the colony of paper wasps deserves to be the top one bug battle in my list. In a bug war of this magnitude, the refugees have no choice but to escape with their young, to start a new life in another part of the forest.